All right, Yale's large format interchangeable core. If you are already familiar with Schlage's full-size interchangeable core, then Yale's is going to be familiar to you because like Schlage, it utilizes a special control key blank, which when inserted, interacts with a pin at the rear of the core, which then interacts with a lug at the rear of the core. And rotating this control blank or this control key clockwise about 20 degrees, it retracts that lug that allows you to remove the core. Then you bring your new one in or you rekey this or whatever, put it back into the housing, rotate it counterclockwise 20 degrees, and that extends the lug. So we don't have build-up pins, formulas, multiple shear lines like Corbin Russwin or Sargent. Everything can be accomplished with this special control key blank. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. They started making these in 1960 and officially got a patent for it in November of 61. And I will include a link to that patent because I know a lot of people enjoy seeing the patent drawings and reading a little bit more about the history behind them. So I'll put that in the video description. They did offer another core around this time. It was a removable core. In other words, it wasn't able to be used in every single housing. You know, certain housings were specific to a lock type or format for, for whatever reason. And they only offered that for a short time before discontinuing it in favor of the figure eight design here. They did uh, start making a high security version that would fit this interchangeable core format in 1989. Uh, and they still make it today. And that really deserves its own video. And I, I really wanna talk about it one day because I don't see it much in videos, article write-ups, pictures, anything like that. But it is a pretty clever and ingenious way to accomplish high security. Now, if you watch the video about Medicos 32 series, you'll recall that I mentioned that Yale granted Medico an exemption to their patent for this format while it was still active. Long story short, they had a customer that uh, all their door hardware was prepped to accept Yale's large format interchangeable core. So they were able to work it out whereby Medico could produce their angled pin sidebar designs into a core that would fit into this format. And actually I've got one here. This is a actually a X4. So they're still making them today, the 31 series. Um, but as you can see, basically the same shape, size, dimensions. They're all identical. Really, the only difference is that um, what's going on inside of the plug, you know, like again, Medico uses their angled pin, sidebar, slider, or in X-Force case, you've got a, a check pin that interfaces with the uh, sidebar or the, I guess the sidebar code of the X-4 key blank. Now these are available in six and seven pin formats. They did offer five pin at one point, uh, but they've long since discontinued that. So if you've got a five pin system and you're trying to incorporate these cores into that system, you basically just have to order a six pin format and leave that sixth chamber empty. Now I've talked long enough. Let's start explaining the, the details of this format. The control key is ex basically one space further than the operating blank. What I mean by that is basically, if you can imagine this is a, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, this is a six pin blank. Well, the control key is just a seventh pin, seven pin blank. And with that added position, you cut down to a one depth, no matter the key bidding specification you're using. And that depth and that added bit of key is what engages that control pin in the back. So I'll kind of show you a close up on it as I insert the key. Go 
a little bit slower. As you can see, the tip of the key is starting to interface with the control pin and we push it up fully because the key is fully inserted. And now we can retract that lug. Uh, you can use 19 thousandths and the 25 thousandths key bidding specification. I know Yale's got both. Um, obviously the 19 thousandths the most popular. Uh, in fact, they don't even use the 25 thousandths anymore for factory systems, but nevertheless, you can use either or depending on your requirements. One thing I will show you too, that was kind of, maybe you picked up on when I showed the Schlage, I mean, I'm sorry, the Medico. Medico's top loading. This particular core is not. Yale switched that in November of, two, no, actually January of 2002. So this core obviously was produced prior to that. But for cores produced after January of 2002, they basically cut out a slot that allowed the cores to be top loaded, just as with the Medico. Put your pins in, springs, and then you can use a capping strip and cap it in place like that. That way you don't have to take it apart, remove the, the clip in the back, use a follower, or anything like that. Now with that out of the way, I will show you, start servicing, zoom in a little bit. These are unique because they use a clip on the rear that is pretty much unlike anything else that anybody makes. And what I mean by that is most clips are, you know, 180 degrees. This one is almost the entire circumference this is where we start. A little bit more. And that's where we end. It's wanting to pull back because of how it's shaped. But basically, you can see this little bit of difference right here on the back side of the plug. Actually, now you can really see it with that lighting. But that's all there is to it. So, in other words, when we remove this clip, we can't really just pry because we'd have to pry so much we'd deform the clip and it'd get really loose. I know it's kind of loose right now, but that's pretty standard, but we don't want it any more loose than that. So, to remove this clip, what I like to do is because there's a indentation on the back side of the plug, I like to drag the clip around and catch one side while inserting my screwdriver to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna pry out and up on the other side. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna start pulling it out of that groove. And once I get a little bit out, that's fine. For the most part, I can remove it with my fingers. But for now, we've gotta get it started. So I've got it locked into place. And I've got it out of the groove. So see, I've popped it out of the groove and it's still wanting to be in there. But once we get to this position, we can just lift up and that clips off. Let's go back in. Now from this position, or from this, we would take our operating key, rotate it, 180 degrees to start with and then back it off a little bit by maybe another 20 degrees. So really only rotating it, I don't know, 160 degrees, something like that. The reason we can't do 90 is because if you see that cutout right there, when we would go through, all those top pins and the springs would shoot down. So we don't want to do that. So if we can rotate it first out of the way of the keyway and avoiding that cutout, we basically got solid metal. Now they did make some older versions that had, in addition to the clips groove, they had a groove about right here. And if you weren't careful and you rotated that 160 degrees, I said you could lock the core up because it would fire down into it. Now I know I don't have one of those, but until you know the difference, uh, another way you could prevent that from happening is if you just take a shim and say you've got it turned about right here, you can place that shim through the back a 
course, it's going to be difficult for me. But you get the point. You place that shim through the back, and that would cover up that cutout, and you would not lock up your core. Follower, half-inch follower works. Same one you use for Schlage, quick set, Sard, and all that. Same thing. got a bit of a burr on it and I think that's what that shim was catching. So we follow it out. That one's beat to hell. Tell you what, let me do another one. I always keep spares on hand because you never know the condition of these when you pull them off the off the back. I explain that burr. Okay, much better. Yeah, that's what they're supposed to look like. Zoom in a little bit. So we've got our normal pins in there, and this is a double-sided one, which is not uncommon, but not common, but whatever. Um, I'll insert the control blank in a second, but if you'll notice that control pin at the rear is basically in line with the top of the plug. So it's basically at the shear line, maybe a little bit below it. If you're, if you're familiar at all with multi-lock, you know, the uh, pin and pin design, the top pins have an outer pin and then the inner pin is spring-loaded from within. And that's basically the same here because when you insert your control key blank, it raises that pin up. You're pressing against the spring, that little bit of extra metal at the tips, pressing against the spring and, and, and raising that pin up. When you remove it, the spring wants to push it back down. So when you've got your control key in, that pin's gonna lift up and I'll show you what it's gonna engage in. Let me set this to the side. It's actually easier to pull one off. It's already not been disassembled. Now you should really never have to remove this lug because if that goes south, something else will have already done so at the same time. These things are, I don't know what they're made out of, but I would guess some sort of stainless steel. To remove the lug, once you remove that screw, there's a kind of a detent right here. It is spring-loaded, so in order to remove it, you have to kind of remove some of that pressure, and then you can just follow it up with a screwdriver or something like that to pull it out. But going back to what I was saying, when that pin's lifted up, that's what we're engaging with to pull it in and out. So that's pretty simple. And then reassembly is basically the same after, you know, let's assume that we've rekeyed this. Helps to have it the right orientation. Let's assume we've rekeyed this. Obviously, we're not going to do it with the control key in there because we never get it in. But we follow it back in, test for operation. Good there. Now, as far as putting the clip back on, don't really need any special tool. You can do it by hand mostly. And there, right there, I just did it like that. Now that one's a little loose. So what I like to do is I'll go behind it and maybe even beforehand, I'll just go ahead and, let's see, I've got one here. If you just take a pair of like needle nose or even ply scripts or something and just kind of press it in a little bit, too, not too much, we don't want to break it, but if you just press it in a little bit, That'll reform it to a position or a shape. It's a little bit more snug. So, let me zoom out just a little bit. With all that out of the way, the only other servicing tip that I would advise is that 
on some of these, when you insert your control key and turn it, obviously this one's pretty good, so I can't show it, but if it's very hard to turn that control key or it feels like it's blinding or it's, it's, you know, hard to retract or, you know, it should, you should be able to retract it with the same level of force that you turning a operating key. But if it's a little bit more than that, almost certainly the problem is that this screw that holds that lug in is too tight. Now, if you'll notice this portion is cut out for that lug. So that, that metal is basically, well, there's nothing there. And this lug has to kind of some, have some play in it. Otherwise, you'd break too many keys trying to retract and throw that lug. But if it's ex exceptionally hard to retract and throw that lug, this screw on the back is too tight. It's too tight and it's pulling this portion of the core forward, which thereby binds with the control lug. So very simply, you would just have to unscrew it a little bit and then tighten to about snug and then test for operation. Don't really need to crank these down because truth be told, if this were to ever work its way free, the back of the, the housing's about right about right there. So it's not gonna work its way completely free. And considering the length of these screws, the position of the control lug is gonna be held in place no matter how far it backs out in the core, or the housing rather. But that's basically it for Yale's 31 series. Like I said, they do offer a high security version in this format, Yale does, and I will try to get my hands on one soon to show you what's all going on in there. Uh, but until next time, thank you for watching.